A childhood dream brought Val Gruner to Africa and the remote Kalahari Desert of Botswana. His work at Grasslands Game Farm, running a volunteer project and caring for captive rogue lions and wild dogs, is fraught with conflict and danger. But rescuing a dying lion cub changed his life forever. Serga is a hand-reared captive, born of wild parents. By rights, she should be dead or in a cage. But Val is determined to give her a chance at a free life and a hunting ground of her own. Can he save Serga from a life in captivity? Can he help her rediscover the wild predator within her? Yeah. Nicely. Right from the start, Valis walked in the wild with Serga to stimulate and keep her active. But until recently, hunting with her seemed an impossible dream. Hey, Sega, stop it. Stop it. Then, at 16 months old, Sega changed the game. She brought down a hartebeest. Her behavior on the kill motivated Val to put his life on the line. He would go hunting with her. Now what now? What now? He cannot allow her to hunt alone. If she encounters humans or strays into a cattle farm, she'll be shot. She can only learn to hunt if Val can go with her. It is risky, but it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Because if she can hunt, he can save her from a life in captivity. They have a 10,000 hectare hunting ground to explore. Come, let's go. Don't go like that. Ouch. Hey. Let's go. They walk in silence, listening. There's something in the brush up ahead. Her body language changes. The kudu has seen movement but is confused by the sight of man and lion. Learning to judge the distance between them and their prey is critical. Serga takes the lead, her movements fluid and instinctive. The pliant body that hugs and cuddles Val changes into a lethal weapon. The soft, tawny fur becomes killer camouflage. She's spring-loaded to strike. Hear the antelope running, so I guess trying to make a kill. But she's too impatient, too inexperienced. Learning to be a hunter takes time and patience. And prey doesn't always have to be antelope. Kalahari lions can't afford to be choosy. Here, prey is anything that's edible. It's a lucky find, a life-saving protein snack to keep a starving lioness going. Uh, nice. But Val is conditioned to think of antelope as prey. 
The tortoise is too small, too vulnerable. It's okay for her to play with it, but he doesn't want her to injure or kill it. Serga's instincts tell her differently. Serga. Serga. Nicely. Play nicely. Let it walk away. Releasing the tortoise goes against all her wild instincts. But Val insists. No, no. Hey, don't eat it. No. Can I have the tortoise? No, be nice. It's a friend. I don't think it likes you. Ah, ah. Everything in her tells her to bite. You lot. But his tone says otherwise. It's rough. It's small. Mm. Should we take it? Can we take it? Ah. Don't bite it. Look, you may, it made it. It peed it up, so it's scared now. No. Oh, she wants nice. it. She knows nice. it's prey. But she doesn't oh. want to displease Val. Come on, stop it. She lets go of the tortoise to please him, but misses a valuable lesson in survival. Well done. Yeah, you are alive. No, no, now your claws must go in. I'm not a tortoise. I don't have a shell. Yeah. The tortoise lives because of Val's human scruples. In the wild, it would not be so lucky. Yeah. I'm getting a bit fat. Look at this. They're learning through trial and error. And sometimes, because they're not starving, it's still a game. A journey of two friends seeking common ground. Come on, have a look. Hey, nicely. Val tends to forget that Sergo is no longer the vulnerable cubby rescued. He struggles to reconcile her budding killer instincts with his own human emotions. A pair of oryx horns puts him back on track. There are lessons he can teach Sergo. Getting to know the smell, look and feel of the oryx horns can save her life. In the wild, young lions learn the weapons of their prey and the complex game of offense and defense by watching the pride in the hunt. Serga has never been part of a wild pride. She is imprinted on Val. Yeah, of course, I'm, I'm really worried about Serga when she runs away and she's off hunting because it just, every time she's gone and you can't see her, I just, I'm just thinking, what if a zebra kicks in the face or she gets hit by a giraffe or an oryx pokes her with the horns? Um, and, yeah, it, it, it could happen. You know, there's always a risk that she, she could even get killed by one of these animals. But so far she seems to be fairly smart and, and there's nothing, nothing wrong with her instincts. So she hasn't, she hasn't tried anything stupid yet. But she did come back from a zebra hunt once and had a, a pretty bad nosebleed. So, yeah, it's just a great feeling to see every time she comes, she comes back from the hunt and I find her again and she's, she's a healthy lion and not, not injured. I'm a bit scared of this. Better be. See how sharp they are. She tastes the horn. Then she tests the odor with the Jacobson's organ, a special scent organ in the roof of her mouth. The scent memory is stored for future reference. She'll associate the scent with something to be wary of, something sharp and lethal. The play is slow and gentle. Serga is a fast learner, but she's naturally cautious. She wants to catch the horns, but she doesn't charge in. Ooh, yeah, careful. Yeah. We can go like this. And she's quick to grasp the danger they pose when raised. Yeah, they're scary horns, eh? It's a lesson worth learning. 
Oryx carry the sharpest weapons of all antelope in the Kalahari. He reverses the horns, letting us see them from a different side, making her understand how they can move and change direction, how they can come at her from different angles. He takes no chances. He wants her to remember that chasing these horns entails risk, that they can mean injury, even death. She's careful, but she's not afraid. She's learning new things. And she's eager to share. After 18 months, there's an easy familiarity between them. She rubs faces with him, transferring scent from glands at the corners of her mouth to him. It signals ownership and belonging. Then she licks him, something lions only do with family members. Mm, thank you. It's how daddy's losing his hair. Huh? He still thinks of her as a cub, but she remembers everything she sees and everywhere they go. She recognizes the scent on the tracks. It's Eland, the largest antelope in Africa. Val is her family, but she seems to understand that he's different from her, that he cannot hear or smell as she does. Her perception of the world is different from his. If they are to succeed in the hunt, Serga has to take the initiative. He can try and be with her and he can support her as she's learning. But only experience can teach her what prey to take on and what is best left alone. Right now, she feels invincible. But in the chase, she will always be completely alone, completely dependent on her own wild instincts and her own speed. Chasing the elands here, and you can nicely see the, the tracks. The eland went the other way, and she was a, a bit too fast, so she just went straight and stopped over there in the, the bush. Now she's coming back. She has yet to learn that lions are ambush predators, not long distance runners. Val cannot teach her. She has to learn through trial and error how to set an ambush, how to time a chase, and how to judge when and how to attack. Win or lose, it's to Val that she returns. He is her father, her mother, and her pride. It's time to go back to camp. They won't go hunting tomorrow. Val has a different hunt on the cards, and this is one hunt Serga can never join. Willy de Graaf, cattleman and owner of Grassland Game Farm, has sent a message. He wants to visit old friends in the buffer zone. Val has to shoot an oryx for the occasion, and he and Mikkel Legarth, co-founder of the Medisa Wardaf project, are invited to go along. It has been two years since Val arrived at Grasslands. 
He has learned much about the realities of wildlife management since then. Shooting oryx, wildebeest in Ireland is a necessity because there are no wild lions on grasslands to reduce the herds. The game farm is overgrazed. Many antelope will die of starvation before the rains. And the meat of one oryx will sustain an entire community of people. Twenty-eight kilometers from grasslands, hidden in the no man's land between the farms and the central Kalahari game reserve, is a small human settlement. These first people of Africa are uniquely rooted in the Kalahari sands. They know Vili and Vala coming, and they've dressed up for the occasion. Vili grew up with the San Bushmen. He's fluent in two of their languages. Some here are old friends. They play together as boys, hunted together as young men, and learned the ways of the Kalahari together. The Oryx is his way of giving something back. Val and Mikkel are new to this world. Val is seeing a different side of his taciturn mentor, and he's surprised by the men's obvious enjoyment of Lee's company. <laughs> Visiting a sound village was part of Val's dream when he came to Africa. He's completely won over. But this is no easy life. The San are no longer allowed to hunt. The community survives on wild fruits, the roots and tubers gathered in the wilderness around them. Protein is scarce. A gift of meat is always welcome. Oryx liver cooked on the coals is a sun delicacy. Willie receives the first piece. It's a sign of respect for the hunter, the provider of food. But in sun culture, everything is shared. Val is eager to try anything. His journey in the Galari has just begun. He wants to learn more about how these friendly, hospitable people survive in a changing world. Vili has shared many a meal with the sun over the years. He knows their ways. There are nuances Val is only beginning to grasp. In sun culture, only the elders eat the soft parts of the animal. The gift of the marrow bone is a quiet hint that Vili is getting old. The children are not allowed to eat this fat. So it's for me and uh, the old man here. Come, Ellen. Val has never tasted oryx marrow before. Game meat is lean and often tough when cooked over the fire. But the marrow in the bones is rich in fat, a rare luxury out here. It's also easy to digest, which is why it's reserved for the elderly. The two men understand that they cannot let such a gift go to waste. Cutting up the meat and hanging it out to dry is serious business. There's no electricity, no refrigerator around here. What cannot be eaten or dried in the sun will spoil in the heat. While the women chatter, drink tea and smoke, and the young men process the oryx, the older men squat down with Vili to discuss a problem with a borehole nearby. The settlement has no water. There's no water coming out of the borehole. Vili knows all about fixing broken equipment in remote places. 
Meeting the Sun people was an amazing experience, or still is. They're, they're around every day, and the knowledge they have about the bush and the way they, they share it, and they're happy to help and to try and to try and educate me a little bit is, is amazing. And I'm I'm learning I'm learning a lot from them, and they're just amazing, friendly people, and. They live such a simple, easy life, but they're very happy and helpful to help. And the knowledge that's, that's still there and about the vegetation, mainly what you can use, what you can eat, is, is just astonishing. The Oryx is a gift to free people, living an ancient lifestyle on the edge of modern civilization. It's a gift that deserves a celebration. Much of their ancient heritage has been lost or discarded in a changing world. But the old songs remain. They tell stories of a people who knew how to live within the natural world. It is an ancient song sung in an ancient language. It tells an age-old tale of a vast ecosystem without boundaries or fences. It is the story of a wilderness where predator and prey are in perfect balance. speaks of soft wind and good rain, and great game herds that ebb and flow with the grass. The rhythm is the heartbeat of the hunter, free to find new hunting grounds, and free to find his own kind in far off places. It is the song of the Kalahari, the home of Serga's ancestors. It is the place Val dreamed of all his life. The Sun community shared a small slice of their lives with Val. He wants to return the favor. They've heard about the man who is friends with the lion, but they've never seen them together. Serga is uneasy. Today feels different from other days. She doesn't know what to make of the people, and they don't know what to make of her. And they all wanted to come see you because they've never seen this, but they heard about you. Hmm? Yeah. And we'll talk about this now for a long time soon. Yeah, I always wanted the Sun people to meet Serga because it's a lion is such a scary and big enemy for them. It's, it's just a, a thing they don't like um, and that they actually rather want to see dead than alive. And yeah, meeting Serga obviously must be a, a crazy thing for them to see that a human can, can hug a lion and interact with a lion like that. And it was amazing to see when they actually arrived how uh, they were all sitting on the car and they became dead silent and I've never heard it before that, that the Sun people were just completely quiet and obviously they were quite amazed but I think also a, a, quite a bit a scared but it definitely must have left a, a big impression with them. The feeling is mutual. It's an awkward encounter. The faces of the people reflect centuries of fear and apprehension. Serga's instincts tell her to be wary of them. She vocalizes, trying to get him to come away, to stop talking. Okay, friends, um, can you just go there to the main camp? Hi. Thank you. 
The cow who taught Val all he knows about captive lions says the sun bushmen believe the lion will one day kill him, but they don't think she'll eat him. Serga remains on edge. Val wants the sun people to see that lions are more than just mindless killers. He's not sure if he made any headway today, but it's a start. It's been an eventful morning. Now it's time to calm Sega down and walk her back to her enclosure. He is needed in camp to welcome new volunteers. Creating awareness of the challenges faced by predators in the Kalahari is what the Medisa volunteer program is all about. Medisa means guardian in Setwana. Volunteers come here to learn to care for wild rogue predators and to help build and maintain infrastructure. Co-founder Mikkel Legarth remembers how it all started. In the beginning we just had this idea, we can just come to Africa and then just start a program and then boop, everything will go. And then suddenly we realized, okay, we need this permit and we need this uh, paper sorted, we need all kinds of, of stuff before you can actually start something. And we start, also started very easy with the camp, like we didn't have a lot of money or anything, so we couldn't just build the whole camp in one day. We had to start very slowly, and that was basically just with a few tents <clears throat> and then a car. That was, that was basically how, how, we, how we started. Um, but also we wanted a camp that is eco-friendly and green as possible, and we don't want to leave a big footprint here in, in, in the nature. And that also takes a lot of work to actually make a camp like that, because we don't want just to have the whole camp run by an energy by a generator or something. We want solar power panels. For instance, we want eco-friendly fridges and refrigerators, and uh, we don't want to use uh, concrete to build. So all these things take a lot of time to actually get organized, and uh, it's also very expensive, so we also had to look at our budget. Okay, we can start with the solar power solution here, and then move slowly uh, as, as we can, uh, every time we get some money, then we can uh, progress a bit more. The volunteers are an integral part of the Medisa Wildlife Project's vision of becoming a global family dedicated to help save African wildlife. They visit Medisa for a minimum of two weeks to learn and to share once-in-a-lifetime experiences with like-minded people. Most are from a world where wealth and the latest digital device and social network determine social status. Here that means nothing. There are no lion cubs to bottle feed or pet at grasslands. Serga is the only hand reared lion and she's not part of the program. Instead, the volunteers maintain enclosures and care for wild captives that will be returned to the wild. Removing old bones from the 10 hectare enclosures is essential because it stops the buildup of harmful bacteria and prevents disease. In the wild, scavengers like baranahina, jackals and honey badgers remove and scatter the bones. Here, people do it for them. They'll make sure that the lions are well fed before cleaning commences. It's an experience none of these volunteers will ever forget. But Val knows lions are opportunistic by nature. The six males are wild and dangerous they different from Serga. An accident will mean the end of his life and work here. Caring for any large carnivore leaves little room for error. At an adjacent enclosure, volunteers are preparing an area for a new experiment. Val has been frustrated by captive lions escaping over the high fences. There is no electricity in this remote area, and the cost of electrifying the enclosures with solar power is exorbitant. The short fence inside the enclosure can be powered by a much less expensive solar energizer. Okay, it's 9,200 volts now on the fence. That's, that's looking pretty good. It should stop the lions from jumping over or digging underneath the main fences. Yeah, it works.
Rob Jackson, the wildlife vet, has traveled 350 kilometers from his surgery in Maun on the edge of the Okavango Delta to Grasslands Game Farm. Val wants him to dart the aggressive lioness in the small enclosure. Her enclosure is littered with old bones and no one dares to clean it. The dart hits the spot. Now everyone has to wait. It's not long before the tranquilizer does its job. Rob has given her a light dosage to transport her to a large new electrified enclosure. She's dragged but aware of her surroundings. None of the volunteers have ever been this close to a lion. And it's this awareness and understanding of the vulnerability of predators that Val wants to foster in young people the world over. Rob stays on the back of the car with the lioness. He doesn't want her to wake up along the way. Five minutes later, they're in the 10 hectare enclosure. Rob does a quick examination. She has lost muscle during her time in the small enclosure, but she's had no exercise. Apart from that, she seems healthy. He'll analyze routine blood samples for telltale signs of infection or disease once he's back at his lab in Marne and report back to Val. Val has been working closely with Rob since his arrival at Grasslands and it was Rob who helped him rehydrate Serga when he found her as a small cub. Since then he continues to help and give invaluable advice on how to look for signs of illness, malnourishment or parasites in the captives and he's on standby in case of an emergency. It's 45 degrees Celsius in the shade. She has to be moved out of the sun to keep her body temperature down. Rob shows Val how to position her, so that she won't choke if she's nauseous. Have we got water? The water helps ensure that her temperature doesn't spike. In this heat, it's vital to reverse the effects of the drugs as quickly as possible. Val is relieved. All right, I think everybody can start moving off. Yeah, we had four young male lions here that, that were causing trouble and escaped the, the cages at, um, quite a few times. So we had to, to lock them up in a prison because they ended up sitting inside the, the lodge area one evening. and. Of course, it's not nice to see them there, so I've been working on an electric fence now, which we have here. And it's finished today. The electricity is working, so we, we can start moving the lines back into the big cage. The, the first line is, is safely settled in the electrified enclosure. He's decided against starting the blonde boy's mothers. He'll try and trap them in lion traps instead. Okay, let's just put them next to the gate here, and tomorrow we can just put them, carry them inside quickly. Setting up the lion traps takes time. Val well knows these females are wary. Finally, everything is ready. All they can do is wait. But where lions are concerned, things seldom go according to plan. She's careful. She's been caught in a trap before. All 
the hard work has been for nothing, she won't go into the trap again. Instead, she tries to reach the bait from the outside. The second lioness hangs back, waiting to see what happens next. Her pride mate is more assertive, more aggressive. In the end, the simplest solution is the best. Yeah, now those females obviously have been caught before in the traps and they don't feel like, um, like going into the traps. They've been spending hours just going around them and picking the meat through the wires from the outside. So it, it makes the doors from the trap shut so easily. So now we've, we've just decided to, to cut a hole into the existing fence between the two enclosures where we want to move them. Um, and we'll try to lure them through here with a bit of meat and hopefully that works. And, and we're just hoping that they don't end up running in between the electric fence and the old fences. But yeah, a bit of a surprise. We'll see how things go. Soon, seduced by the meat, the first lioness finds a way through the hole in the fence and into the new enclosure. It doesn't take long before a more timid friend follows suit. She's angry and stressed, but she's settled in a new electrified home. The end of the dry season when grazers are struggling is the perfect time for Serga to practice hunting. Val takes her out whenever he can. She's 18 months old now. In the wild, she would not be bringing down prey yet, but she'd be supporting the pride, covering the flanks or spooking game into ambush. but she would pounce on any weak or sick animal that came her way. In the hunt, anything can happen. Prey animals move, the wind changes. Being able to adapt and react is everything. Temperatures of 45 degrees Celsius sap Val's energy but subtle signs heralding the approaching rains seem to energize Serga. She's becoming more restless by the day. She's moving off on her own, searching, and her search is charged with new purpose. Instinct tells her this is the right time to be out here. The antelope are struggling to survive. The smell of the dead eland is overpowering in the heat. There are few nutrients left in the winter vegetation. It's starved to death. She inspects the carcass. She memorizes the scent of death. There's a spring in Serga's step. Her blood tells her this is a unique moment in time, an opportunity. The wildebeest see the hunters, but they're weak from hunger. They're slow to react. The urge to hunt stirs deep within her. This is what it means to be a lion. There's a straggler behind them. She reacts on instinct, changing course. Then she charges. At 18 months old, Serga brings down her first wildebeest. It's the moment of truth. If she attacks him now, there'll be no more hunting with her. But Serga's trust is unconditional and overwhelming. She allows him close. She's focused on the wildebeest. He wants her to put it out of his misery. She's not interested in his human qualms. He's relieved that she's brought down the wildebeest and that she's not attacking him. But he struggles to reconcile his need to help her hunt with his human need to help the antelope. His brain tells him she has to learn. 
but his heart cannot bear the Vuldigis' suffering. She ignores him. For Serga, as for any young lioness in the wild, her first significant takedown is a milestone. She's testing reflexes, reacting to sound stimuli, and experiencing a massive adrenaline rush. Val's whole life has been concerned with preserving and saving the lives of wild animals. He can take no more. The leader Graf notices a problem here. If you have experience with lions, you can see that some of them chase the animal, grabs it from behind, and then the killer comes in and they get the throat and then uh, uh, strangle them until they die. So there is chasers and there is killers. Yeah. And what we are seeing here with Serga is that she chases the animal and she grabs the animal from behind, but she is waiting for Valentin to come and, 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 and kill the animal. And that's not what we really want. We want her to, to do the killing herself and so that she can survive in nature. Billy feels Val is allowing himself to become part of the kill instead of letting her hunt on her own. But something extraordinary is happening here. Something unprecedented. For the first time ever, a man and a lion are sharing a kiln. In the heat of the moment, when her blood is up and her killer instincts are at their peak, Serga accepts Val's presence. He's part of her hunt, part of her kill. And once the suffering is over, Val controls his emotions. He opens the kill like a lioness would for a cub. Serga has succeeded. Hunting with her has paid off. In the wild, every lion kill becomes a battleground for survival. But Serga makes allowances for the man. She doesn't compete with him. Instead of aggression and conflict, the kill cements their mutual trust and strengthens an already uncanny connection. It's very nice. Look here. Instead of a battle for dominance, the kill becomes a family feast with carefully selected tidbits served by hand. The danger is past. Val can relax and celebrate Serga's success and progress. Without realizing it, the two friends have forged the first ever hunting coalition between a man and a lion. I didn't hear those wildebeest anything. Why would you do that if I just opened up the whole thing for you? It is a momentous occasion. The wildebeest isn't prey anymore, it's food. <laughs> All wild lionesses encourage their cubs to practice chasing and taking down prey until they master all the skills of the hunt, including killing it. By putting the wildebeest out of its misery, Val has deferred that final vital lesson. It is a mistake and it might come back to haunt him. But right now, it doesn't matter. It's getting late. He has to be practical. Serga cannot stay out here. A kill has to be transported back to her enclosure, 
where she can feed through the night. It has to be dragged to the shade until the truck arrives. It's back-breaking work. Yeah, hunting with Serga is something that I never expected to happen in that way at all. And I never had to teach her how to hunt. It's just bringing her out into the bush where there is antelope and where there's wildlife. It's just what gave her the opportunity to practice hunting a lot. And the skills that, that's there, the, the instinct to hunt, every lion has, and I doubt that Anybody, nobody can teach a lion that. That's just what's, what's there, like we have in a normal domestic cat that will catch a mouse. Um, so a, a lion will eventually catch an antelope. And that's just what happened. And that I was able to be part of it is just something that happened along the way that I didn't expect at all. It was more the thing that I was scared of. What will happen if she kills something? Will she be aggressive towards me like lions would be with each other often or, or not? And she wasn't at all. She actually waits for me to help her when she is catching something. and. We don't want the antelope to suffer, so obviously I, I try to go there and once she has it down and it's, it's already going to die, if I can help it by cutting the throat to make it quicker, that's a, it, it just helps the whole thing and it, I guess that's what another lion would be doing if she would be hunting in a pride as lions usually would. But that was something that I never expected and it's just, yeah, it's an amazing experience and I guess a very unique thing that happened. No, I don't think Sugo will ever kill me. It's just a, like you have a, a friend and you trust each other. There's no, no reason for her to, to kill me. And I know she could, but, but I never think about that she, she, may, she might do it. There's, there's no worries. You know, we're gonna build you a big cage. You don't have to worry anymore. I don't have to worry that you eat somebody when you're walking around. Hmm? We can maybe give you a boyfriend, and if you're lucky, you can have babies with a boyfriend. Hmm. Only if daddy likes him. Otherwise, we get a new one. <laughs> That'd be nice. Val is elated. Sega has taken a giant step towards independence. He's beginning to see <laughs> the world through a lion's eyes. And he's discovering just how observant an inventive large predators are. Don't eat it, I can't, can't open your cage any. Success in the hunt has come just in time. A stiff breeze chases in the clouds and delivers the first tentative showers. The orb spider holds on tight and rides the wind. She waits. The rain will bring the insects to her trap. If things go according to plan, she will have young, and perhaps also a small husband to devour before long. This year, like every year, the Kalahari holds its breath for good rains. Val has a surprise up his sleeve before the rains. Their bond is stronger than ever. But as Serga matures, she's bound to become more independent. It's a color. Uh, lay down, Serga. Come on. Uh, right there. Right there. No. Don't, don't bite that piece, it's gonna break. See, it comes off, and then it just goes on like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rob Jackson worries that she could wander off into a neighboring cattle farm. He wants her to get used to wearing a training collar while she's still young. Val can then fit a GPS collar later. It will help him track her if she disappears on a hunt and doesn't return. It's not comfortable. You have to get used to put the arm. Yeah. 
It's not nice, man. Well done. Well done. You don't have to worry about it. Just stay there. The collar disorientates her. She doesn't know what to make of it. Try as she may, it won't budge. She's not happy with the tight thing around her neck, but she's also curious. Sergei is a complex and intuitive being. Her view of the world is different from Val's, but their bond transcends their differences. And Sergei has stepped up to the plate. Val's belief that he could join Sergei on the hunt and survive has paid off. It's a significant breakthrough, and it comes in the nick of time. The future looks promising, but the rainy season will bring dangerous new challenges for the two young hunters to overcome. <laughs>